Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Common Sense. Um, I have with me today Michael Zarella. Michael's running for counselor at large here in the city of Brockton. Mike, thanks for coming in, buddy. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, so, what do you think of uh, what do you think of running for public office? It's been an experience so far. Um, I've enjoyed almost every minute of it. It's been long days. You know, I, I work a regular job, 40 hours a week. I come home. I have my family, and being out campaigning every day, and returning calls and emails, and making sure my schedule's on point. It's definitely been trying, but it's also a great experience, and I wouldn't change anything. Well, um, one thing when you do a show like this, you get to meet interesting people, and. Um, I know uh, you know. You told me that uh, you work for the corrections department and you're over at Cedar Junction. Um, I'd like to do a show not about you running for office, but about what goes on with your job and w uh, what happens up there. But uh, we're not here for that. But uh, that's the one good thing. You meet so many interesting people and um, you certainly have uh, some life experience that I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in. Um, what um, what uh, causes you to run and choosing uh, to run for counselor at large? Well, I've always thought about getting involved in politics. That's always been something I've been interested in. And growing up in the city, I've seen a lot of things go on over the years. And now, being a homeowner and having my family here, I'm invested in even more. And, you know, there's a lot of things that need change, a lot of things that need help. I feel like I do have a lot of good ideas, and I you know, would be able to help a lot of people if given the opportunity if I'm elected as the next city council at large in Brockton. So um, talk to me about uh, who is Mike Zarella? Um, are you from the city? Uh, you know, did you grow up here? Or I am. the folks at home. I am, Tom. I was, I was born, brought up here in the city. I went to school here from elementary up through Brockton High, graduated in 1999. Where'd you go to school? I went to Kennedy Elementary School. South Junior High and Brockton High, and then I went to Massasoit in criminal justice program. Um, you currently live, I think, over near the Brookfield? I do. I live in the Brookfield neighborhood. I bought my house there in 2010, and we love it over there. It's, um, it's a nice family neighborhood, and um, I didn't know if we would get into this later. A lot of people have asked me, well, why didn't you run for your ward? And I feel like Ward 6 is a great ward to live in. Um, I feel like some of the problems that a lot of the city has, we don't get a lot in Ward 6. Um, it's probably one of the lowest crime areas. Uh, lots of single-family homes, and you know everyone that lives there seems to have a lot of pride. Um, we have a great public elementary school up there that you know, my daughter loves. Um, what grade is your daughter? She's in second grade, Tom. And You've had a good experience so far? We couldn't be happier with the school system up there. Um, uh, the principal, Mrs. Uh, Brower. Val Valerie Brower, yep. a wonderful woman. Um, and I know she cares a lot about the kids up at the school. And she runs a tight ship. <laughs> yeah, she does. She definitely does. <laughs> yeah. um, it is a nice, it's a nice clean school. I've been up there, you know, for different things. And it's... Uh, it's a nice community, like you said, sort of like a you know a, any suburban bedroom community. You know, people just doing you know going about business. Um, I'm a little familiar with Brookfield. I played Brookfield Little League as a kid. Um, uh, you know, up at the Rodney Street Parks, and uh, there was a senior league field sort of over the hill beyond the Rodney Street Parks. Yes. And uh, we started off Little League right there at the you know down John Drive right there at the Brookfield School itself. That's where we started off with you know minor league and. Uh, and um, you know, just little league itself. But uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great area, and um, you obviously, you know, you're a member of the community, and you're motivated to run. So that's great. Um, it's a big field, obviously. Um, so what would you say um, sets you apart? What do you think? Uh, you know, you bring to the uh, community that uh, people need to know about. Well, first off, as Tom mentioned, I do work for the Massachusetts Department of Correction at MCIC at Junction. And so you know how to deal with people. I do know how to deal with people. You That's have to know how to definitely deal with one people. of my strengths. And also growing up, I really kept a diverse group of friends. And that helped me in life learn people skills, learn from different people and different cultures. Because I think if you live in Brockton, that's very important that you immerse yourself in all the different cultures because that's what makes the city so wonderful. Um, 
with everybody here together in a city of about a hundred thousand people and I, I just I couldn't think of a better place to bring my family if they wanted to learn culturally and to deal with different people because that's a real world if you go out in the real world into the workforce it's diverse and you want to give your children that experience of growing up in a diverse community I think that's important well, I think it provides them with balance you know they uh, exposed to different people and different uh, uh, ethnicities and uh, you know realize that there are differences and you have mutual respect for people and you learn a little bit about each other you know so it's definitely unique and like you said a good thing about growing up in Brockton um, what um, what do you uh, talk to about uh, talk to uh, on the campaign trail with the um, with the voters what what are their interests what uh, what are their concerns what uh, issues do you uh, you know basically hear from from the voter one of the main things probably the question in everybody's mind is what are you going to do about the crime and you know I start to tell them a little bit my background and that gives people I think a little bit more faith in me that I might be able to understand the criminal justice system the ins and outs of it how it works understanding how criminals operate that's all something I've been interested in growing up um, you know, so what do you think is going on here? What, what do you think? What do you think is happening, and what do you think we need to do? Well, the murder rate and the crime in general, I don't think it's gotten any better. I mean, I remember grow, as growing up as a teenager, it was almost the same way it is now. It hasn't gotten any better um, 20 years later, and that's that's appalling to me. Um, so the city needs help, and I know you can't blame that all on the mayor. You can't blame it on the police force. Um, we also, I mean, we've been working with multiple eight law enforcement agencies. I know I went to a public safety meeting recently. Um, sitting before me was the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, the FBI, ICE, um, the S Massachusetts State Police. I know are very involved and active in the city. And I don't know how much more help we could get at the moment, but things definitely need to change and I would definitely be at the forefront of trying to help make those changes. What do you think the cause of it is? Why, why do you think that things are so um, you know, out of control to a degree in terms of you know violence and you know shootings and you know guns and... Tom, I think it's the, the culture that some of the, um, the children are growing up in and also the people who maybe got lost between the cracks growing up and they've considered this as a good way of life. Um, a lot of kids grow up nowadays and they um, they just they, they're not going up the right way. Um, they, don't, they don't have the proper role models. They might not have the right programs. Maybe at home they're getting raised by a, a single mother who's you know maybe she's working two jobs or maybe she's on public assistance and can't work for whatever reason and she just can't be there f for her children and that might be part of the problem right there yeah, I would agree with you that I'd, I'd say the breakdown of the family is definitely a yes. problem I, I, I think that you know uh, uh, the breakdown of the family in this country not just Brockton but all over is the problem with how certain kids are going in the wrong direction like you said lack of role models um, people to you know guide them in the right direction you know in that path I mean when you're you know raising kids you know the kids don't raise themselves and if if they do you know the streets are going to raise the kids um, you know exactly. kids having kids that's another problem I mean um, you know I see it you know I'm part of the school committee and you know I certainly see a lot of issues that are in the schools and um, you know, when you have uh, uh, kids that come from, you know, homes where, uh, you know, there aren't, there isn't responsible parenting going on, the odds are, now there are always certain exceptions, you always have the success stories, but the odds are that um, things may not go well, and I think we're seeing it in society. So... It's a sad situation, but you know it's something that we obviously have to deal with, and it's great that you're stepping up to the plate. Um, 
talk to me about uh, you know another issue here in Brockton and other communities. We see drugs, drug overdoses. I mean, it's you know the heroin epidemic. Uh, the enterprise has done a good job reporting on it, um, but it's happening everywhere. It's happening in the suburbs. It's happening uh, you know across the country. I mean, you talk to people. You know, we've seen it in Abington. All the suburban districts have problems. You know, ODs everywhere. Norwell, it's it's rampant out there. Absolutely. What do you think's happening there? What's happening is isn't too hard to figure out. Um, these doctors are prescribing people who may legitimately have pain issues opiates, Percocets, um, Oxycontin and then somehow kids are getting a hold of them. It's, it's looked at almost accepted because a doctor is prescribing it and they start using these opiates, these Oxycontins, um, Percocet and then they're getting hooked on that. They can't afford it at the street level anymore. They're paying whatever, 30, 40, up to $80 per, per, per pill. And then they're turning over to, um, to heroin because they can get that much cheaper for $5. Now, the heroin that's on the street is being laced with all types of different chemicals. Um, recently, fentanyl has been one of the biggest ones that's been causing a lot of these overdoses with these kids and just like you said this isn't just a Brockton problem this is going throughout the whole South Shore probably throughout the whole country oh, the whole country and it's a tragedy and you know I think we really need to um, make sure at a young young age that we teach our children what these drugs can do to them and to their life because I feel so bad for these parents that are burying their children and they're, they're losing them to the drug to the, these drugs. Yeah, I, I agree with you on something that you just said about you know over prescribing. Um, uh, I was watching you know one of, I don't know if it was like 60 Minutes or 2020 or one of those shows, and um, they were interviewing doctors, and the doctors were saying that you know um, they made mistakes in terms of giving certain patients you know too much or too potent, and then the end results were, were that these patients you know were hooked on this stuff and um, you know the drug companies I think um, you know in collusion with some of the physicians that over prescribed you know really got the ball rolling um, and um, you know even uh, I know a good gentleman who lost a child who uh, the kid had a ski accident um, injured his leg they prescribed you know I think it was Percocets or Oxys, I'm not sure which ones, but you know, and the father said that was the beginning of the end for my son. And um, you know, recently he took his own life. Um, horrible, just horrible. A nice family from a wealthy suburban uh, community. Um, and you know, they're all in mourning over it, you know, sick over it. So it's, it's, a, it's a horrible problem, but I think the medical profession and the pharmaceutical community um, have some responsibility in this that got the ball rolling uh, to to a large extent, you know, and and people need to wake up, I think, and you know, it's good that someone like yourself who has this experience with uh, these issues is is running for office. Um, we also have a lot of other stuff going on in Brockton. Um, what are some of the other issues that uh, you see, and what's your position on them uh, here in the city of Champions? One is the homelessness. Um right across the street from this studio Tom unfortunately uh, we have the main spring house we have a park that's right next to the main spring house where a lot of the residents um, that stay at the main spring house tend to frequent during the day among with many other people and that also which is also a citywide problem causes urban blight and it's very it's a tough situation because these people are desperate. They need a place to go. But I feel like Brockton is the dumping ground for the whole South Shore, south of Boston, for everyone who's down and out, who's homeless, who's drug addicted. This cannot be the only place where these people can be sent to get the social services and the help that they need to try to get back on their feet because it's becoming a huge burden on Brockton as a whole and we cannot keep absorbing this. It that is detrimental to Brockton thriving again. And we need to find out some other programs, maybe have some of these other towns 
taken some of the burden away from us. You have to wonder, I mean, there's some actually some nice development going on here in downtown Brockton, but you do have to ask the question, um, you know, with uh, the issues you just raised, uh, will it have a negative impact on, you know, sales of, uh, you know, these condominium units uh, being developed, you know, in the old Enterprise building and the buildings across from W.B. Mason? Um, I mean, they're, it's right around the corner from each other, you know? These, um, I, you know, I was very happy to see that the state was, were giving grants and Brockton was able to renovate the station lofts and get the construction project off the ground for the Enterprise Block. And it's, I, I drove by there today and it's, it looks like you're driving down a street in downtown Boston. It looks beautiful on the Enterprise Block. You have W.B. Mason on one side and this brand new building on the other side. And but right across the street from that, close to the Dunkin' Donuts, and right next to our Brockton train station is a methadone clinic where early in the morning you have people lingering about and you know waiting to get their medicine. Um, my experience with that is they're being given Suboxone to try to wean them off of the heroin, and I see this firsthand. I see criminals, they come to my facility and they're dope sick. They're, um, they're put on detox for days at a time and they've gone to measures of trying to smuggle in these suboxone strips. It's almost like a Listerine strip and they're bringing them into the prison. Now these people, this given How them, do they get them in? They, um, how do they get them in? Um, there, a lot of times these are people who are not held in the county jails. They're swallowing it knowing they're going to be sentenced and then they go into prison and then using the bathroom a few days later, hmm. that's when they can produce these drugs Sad. into hmm. the institution. And like I said, my experience with this is I know that this, this suboxone, this, this clinic, maybe the state feels like they need it because they need to do something for these people, but it's not curing them. It's just keeping them from being sick and some people are using it just because they can't get to you know the actual heroin or any other opiates they're just using it to you know try to wean them off or until they can get their hands on something better well I certainly agree Brockton seems to be getting uh, more than its fair share of all of the um, uh, you know social issues that uh, plague the state I mean so I, I think there should be a more fair distribution of you know these types of um, services that uh, obviously are needed but um, I, I, I would agree that it's not right that you know Brockton you know bears 99 percent of everything on the South Shore for God's sake. It's you know? not right it's, it's not and and you have to wonder though um, despite all that Brockton's a great place you have to admit, Brockton is, you know, we've got so much, there's so much good in Brockton. There's so many good people in Brockton. Uh, it, it, it's amazing, you know, but again, you want things to go in the right direction. And, you know, people are obviously concerned with, you know, the issue of crime, like you mentioned. There is, and I feel like we've lost tons of good families, people that were just fed up with Brockton. We're losing them to the Bridgewaters, to Easton, Abington, all the surrounding towns. They're driving father for work, they are to towns that maybe don't even have commuter rail. They're giving up on this because they don't want to be in this environment. They don't want to expose their children to it. So if they can, they move out and, you know, we can't keep affording to lose all these good families. I want to attract more good families to take a chance on Brock to move into the city, but I don't think that's possible until we clean up some of the crime and some of the drugs that's prevalent in the city. Um, what, uh, what are some of the things that positive that you'd like to, um, obviously, you know, dealing with the crime issue is, is a positive, but uh, what are some of the, um, you know, things that you think that uh, need to happen in Brockton um, to attract business or to attract, um, you know, more investment uh, to, to help out the city and, and bring in positives? Um, definitely, I, I like what's going on with the revi revitalization downtown that we were speaking about. 
but we also need to attract businesses that are willing to come in and take a chance on downtown and we also need the people to support them to support these businesses that have disposable income that are willing to go out that they feel safe going out after the sun goes down and after the courthouse is closed for the day um, well I think one of the issues with downtown and it's been you know discussed over and over again is you know Main Street's a one-way street you know quite frankly it's a pain in the butt to navigate down there and you know the parking is limited and then you know you, people don't feel like getting a parking ticket and I mean so and and then again you want to make sure you know people are safe you know with uh, some of the characters uh, once in a while that don't stroll in downtown I mean you know if, if your wife is taken you know you said you had a three-year-old and a seven-year-old? Yes, sir. So your, three, your wife's yes. taking your three-year-old and seven-year-old out of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure she's safe, you know, if Absolutely. she's going to frequent the store down there or something. And, um, you know, it, it just needs to be more user-friendly to the average consumer. You know, whereas the mall, you know, you show up at the mall, you get plenty of parking. Um, you know, they mm -hmm. have mall security strolling around the mall. Yes. I mean, not to say nothing can happen, but... Yeah. You know, 99 percent of the time, you go do your business in the mall. You go home and you're done. And you know, that's you know, it. And you that's go to Market Basket or you know, a, a grocery store. You know, Shaw's stop and shop, and then you're you're done. That's just it, Tom. And that's accessible from Route 24, whereas the downtown area really isn't. And I think that's why, once they built Westgate Mall, that Main Street kind of you know, just wasn't a flourishing area anymore. And we definitely need to build build it back up. I've seen some of the other cities just like Brockton, New Bedford, Lowell, their downtowns are thriving again and I think Brockton's next but we need to take care of some of these issues first. Yeah, and you gotta make, I think the planning in terms of traffic flow and parking and those types of issues need to be ironed out so that people don't feel like it's a hassle, you know, more of a hassle to go down there yes. and to get caught down there and you know, it's like, uh, um, whereas it's just easier to park at a store that has plenty of parking, um, you know, whether it's the east side or the west side, I mean, um, you know, I grew up over in the Ashfield area, and, you know, Fernandes Market was down um, on the east side, near, uh, you know, across the street from what's now Home Depot, you know, and my mom always used to, you know, go there, and the city's changed, I mean, you know, there was the, the Maple Alleys was yes. there, we used to hang out there, there was the, the movie theater, uh, you know, next to Christos, you know. Yeah, that was my first real job. I worked in Brockton East Cinema. Right. Just 15 years I loved old. It. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the movies were like sort of second run or whatever yes. it was, but it was still awesome. It was great, you know. And then you'd walk over to Friendly's at the corner or Papa Gino's, you know. I mean, Brockton it was great. I loved. It I loved was. growing up here in Brockton. It was always something to do. You go to Maple Alley's, you know. And we had three movie theaters in the city when I was growing <laughs> up. And now there's zero. Yeah, we had what Lowe's Cinema back we had of uh, Lowe's. Frank's. You know, you had the the mall and, and the you mall. had East Side Cinema. Exactly. exactly. And then, you know, you had two bowling alleys. You had, you know, Westgate Lanes and you mm -hmm. had uh, Maple Alleys. I mean, it was great. Mm -hmm. You know, things are changing. I and mean, hopefully, uh, uh, you know, we're going to get on the right track because there's a lot of good people out there that uh, want to put in the effort, you know, um, like yourself. So um, what are other issues that you see out here in the, the city? You know, we've got the power plant. We've got... Um, the casino, we, you know, we got it all in Brockton. You know, we've got plenty of stuff to talk about. There is, there definitely is. Um, as far as the power plant, I'm not for it. A lot of the people that I've talked to, the more I've educated myself on it, I just don't see where it fits into bettering Brockton. Um, what I heard that it's only going to produce five jobs, so it's not going to produce any jobs. Um, it's not going to power Brockton. One of the things that I think is a major flaw is that unlike, you know, TMLP down in Taunton, mm -hmm. where they have some of the best rates of electricity mm -hmm. for that community because it's a local power plant. Yes. You know, I think that there would have been more support if some degree of the power were going to help was going to help out the local community and people were going to see a direct benefit to their electric bills or you know I, mean, I think so the local and component so to speak and you know? I believe that you know just as the casino was put to a vote even though it passed by such a slim margin that the power plant should have been put to a vote um, 
but you know the city's democracy been, the city's been fighting this for years and I'm surprised that we're even still talking about it um, the people don't want it so it just it shouldn't get built um, I just don't don't see where it would benefit Brockton and you know health issues I wouldn't want my children if I, I don't live in that area but I do know many people many good families who live down there and no one that I've talked to thinks it's a good idea so why bring that into our city with all the health risks um, it's not creating any jobs it's going to be diesel powered which would need a police escort you're taking away uh, public safety which needs to be out on the street not escorting a diesel truck back and forth um, I'm just not for it and I, I hope that eventually this can go away and get resolved and the well the problem now is it's in the courts yes it'll be I, I understand the, and, and if and there's if all a resolution can't be made between yeah. the parties yeah. a court's going to decide there's a current lawsuit against the city council yeah. that I'm aware of mm. and um, so I, you want to jump into that huh n not necessarily but I'm willing to if if I have to fight for that I will mm. Um, you know, the, 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 the worst thing that obviously could happen to Brockton is if somehow the courts say that uh, the city's liable for all the costs because of uh, the actions of the city uh, in preventing this thing from going forth causes a huge liability. I mean, so that's something that obviously I, the mayor and the council need to assess. Absolutely. in this whole thing. I mean, that's a major factor. You know, whether the city wants it or not, you know, the court could decide and, and will eventually decide what the city is going to get, you know. And we've seen that so much with respect to, you know, courts today deciding decisions that affect the lives of so many people, you know. Whether, whether it be, you know, health care, the Supreme Court basically said Obamacare is, passes the sniff test to the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, um, we'll see what the courts do with it. You know, but the problem is if the court nails Brockton because they say, oh, you treated this power plant unfairly, you caused them to spend all this money, you never should have held them up. It was what they tried to do was whether you wanted it or not, it was a legal business and they had every right the way the Brockton was zoned to apply to get this. You know, so we'll see what the courts do. I mean, that's, yeah. that's something that needs to be, uh, I guess, assessed by all parties, you know. Definitely. Well, so, um, I know we always have fun here on my show, but uh, we're getting actually close to two minutes. Okay. Can you believe that almost a half an hour has gone by? Mm -hmm. It's, it's <laughs> yes. It, it just I flows. Can. Yeah, just flows. I can. <laughs> um, so, um, in these last two minutes, um, you know, please tell, you know, the people what you really want them to know about you and what you uh, hope to achieve. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad that you were able to come in. Okay. Um, well, like I said, Tom, thank you for having me on the show. It's been a pleasure meeting you and talking with you these, this last half an hour. And to all the voters out there, my name is Michael A. Zarella, and I am running for city council at large. I come before you today because I want your vote. I want to fight for you and your family. I want to move Brockton forward in the best way possible. I am making sure that this will become a better place. And if I can't do that, then don't give me the chance. Vote me out again in two years. But for these next two years, I will work so hard for you guys. I will make sure that whatever I am needed for, I will be there. Call me. My phone number is 508-345-8318. You can contact me anytime. I'm on Facebook. Facebook.com backslash fighting for Brockton I will be number six on the ballot please don't forget to vote September 22nd Michael Azarella number six thank you well I'm glad you came in I hope uh, I hope you felt comfortable with uh, with uh, speaking you did a great job I would say and um, I uh, wish you luck you certainly um, committed and you know earnest about your intention and uh, you know certainly I can tell you want to do what's best for Brockton